All right, Chris, thanks. Fox Carolina is committed to you and a big day tomorrow as Greenville County school kids head back to the class, the largest school district in the state, of course. All eyes will be on that district. Preparations, of course, underway to make sure everything is good. A lot of folks paying a close attention to what's happening even at this hour. We had Pickens County going virtual because of a COVID spike last week, so they're virtual today. And we're now learning several football teams dropping like flies because of COVID-19 cases. We've had three upstate schools announcing today they're canceling their games on Friday due to COVID protocols. So uh, it's something we're seeing uh, once again happening as these right. districts head back to school. Yeah, we'll continue to monitor that for you. And Fox Carolina's Carrie Weimer live for us this afternoon at the uh, school district office there in downtown Greenville. We know, Carrie, you spoke uh, with some representatives from Greenville County Schools. How are they feeling about the start of this new school year with just so many question marks? That's right. There's a lot of question marks. You know, we've got two kids trying to get them ready to go back to school. I thought that was a lot. The Greenville County School District has over 74,000 kids that they're making preparations for to get back into school this year. And they say with the challenges that have come from the pandemic, even though they're daunting, they're still very hopeful for the year ahead. The Greenville County School District tells us they expect COVID cases to rise as students come back to in-person learning starting tomorrow. The very nature of COVID-19 has been so complex from the start. It's hard to have a set plan for every possible scenario. The district says data collected from DHEC and information from students, families and school staff will be monitored by medical health services. We're basically starting at a point where we don't know what's going to happen until it happens. Instead of having the entire district go to virtual learning, if a spike in cases occur, they'll handle it on a school by school basis or even down to particular classrooms instead of the entire school. Ultimately, Dr. Royster will make that executive decision. If it's something that carries great weight, he will very often take that to the board for their consideration. Some parents we talk to are staying optimistic. Concerning COVID, I'm not worried about the year because I feel like if we follow the same guidelines that we follow before, whether it's mandated or not, we should be successful. We are going to roll with conditions uh, as need be. We will pivot when we have to. We will change up plans. We will be innovative. We will think out of the box. Uh, but at the, at the end of all this, we will get through this school year and it will be a positive experience for students. Waller says the district has fewer options available to protect students if cases of the virus suddenly spike because of recent legislation from SC lawmakers. He says the district will always choose the safest path and doesn't think that politicians should be the ones driving the decision. Ultimately, we're going to make decisions based on the health and safety of students and staff. Now, speaking of that legislation, right here in just a few minutes, we're going to talk to Tim Waller live. We've got more questions for him about those changes that you can expect to see. We're going to find out more information just coming up, guys.